Kathy. I'd like to start with a show of hands. Who has used at least one LED light bulb already? Ah, not just family and friends, great. Um, and so you're aware that a lighting revolution is already beginning, and yet most of us really still do take lighting for granted, don't we? It's not one of the three basic needs for human life, and it's not in Maslow's hierarchy of needs from those three basics right up through self-actualization. Why is that? Well, it's because light is so fundamental, like air and water and the earth itself, that it supersedes lists like this. If we take light away, sitting here in the dark, you're not worried about food or self-actualization. Well, maybe food, it's getting late in the day. Um, you just want the lights back on. In utter darkness, this is how our early ancestors experienced nighttime for the first few million years of human evolution. Then about a quarter of a million years ago, one bright ancestor discovered how to capture and control fire. And we had our first lighting geek. Well, our first lighting revolution. A revolution is a sudden or momentous change in a situation. But for the next quarter of a million years, fire was all we had. Torches, oil lamps, candles, and gas lamps. Until 1879, when Edison invented the first practical electric light bulb, leading to the creation of our company, General Electric, and the second wave of lighting technology, incandescent lighting. That was a sudden and momentous change in the convenience of light. Now you just threw a switch. That light bulb, though, also introduced us to electricity itself, leading to all of the electrical appliances and modern gadgets we have. It literally launched us into the modern era. The progress in lighting since that time has been steady and pervasive, really more an evolution than a revolution. One of the ways that we've measured the progress of lighting in that time is the efficiency of light sources, given by the amount of light produced in lumens divided by the amount of electricity consumed in watts, lumens per watt, or LPW. The plot of LPW for an incandescent lamp from Edison's time to ours goes from about one lumen per watt to about 30 over a period of about 100 years. The shape of this curve is typical to the shape of human activities in many areas. It starts out slowly, it gains speed as we get better at it, and then it might saturate due to some fundamental limitation. If a technology slows down, it's vulnerable to newer and better technologies. The uh, efficiency, as the efficiency increase um, for incandescence slowed down, it was vulnerable to the invention of the fluorescent light bulb in 1938. This brought in the third wave of lighting technology that we call discharge lighting, literally lightning in a bottle. Discharge lighting includes fluorescent, compact fluorescent, and some very bright lights that we call metal halide and high pressure sodium. Discharge lamps produce so much light so efficiently and inexpensively that we've literally lit the whole world with them. 90% of all artificial light today is produced by discharge lamps. So now that we've come back to the present, I'd like to acknowledge Cleveland's role in this. Although fire, the first wave, probably wasn't invented here in Cleveland, much of the technology in waves two and three was developed right here in Cleveland at GE's world headquarters called Neela Park. You might know the place where the beautiful Christmas displays are every year on Noble Road in East Cleveland. And in fact, next month, we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of Neela Park. In 1913, it was the world's first industrial park and now is listed on the US National Register of Historic Places. In fact, that fluorescent bulb that was invented in 1938 was invented there at Neela Park. And then in 1959 and 1960, the world's first halogen lamps and metal halide lamps were also invented at Neela Park. And in 1976, the world's first compact fluorescent also invented at Neela Park. It was these exciting technology developments and these talented Clevelanders that attracted me into the lighting industry and to Cleveland in the 1980s. We moved here, raised our family here, and stayed here. In the first 10 years of my career, I was doing research in nuclear fusion, a potentially limitless and clean energy source. At that time, we thought that nuclear fusion power would be about 20 years away. Now, 40 years later, it seems fusion might be 50 years away. And while I'm still an enthusiastic fan and they're making great progress, I wanted to see my work have a more direct impact in my lifetime. Having worked in lighting, we've had immediate and significant impact on the global energy use 
and greenhouse gas emissions, and that's been very satisfying to me. So back to those S-curves for discharge that attracted me into lighting. Well, it's got a fatal flaw. It's saturating far short of where we hoped we could take it, so now it's vulnerable to a new technology, the fourth, solid state lighting, or SSL. Most of today's solid state lighting is what we call LED, or light emitting diode, so I'll focus on that now. Shown here is the invention of the first visible LED, um, also at GE, not at Neela Park, but in our research labs in Syracuse, New York, by Rich Holonyak, shown here, shown here last year during the 50th anniversary of his invention. So why do we think that this fourth phase of lighting is going to be such a big deal? Simply because we finally figured out how to make light directly from electricity without having to make heat. You see, each of those first three waves of lighting made light as a byproduct of making heat. We started out with fire, got a little bit of light. We, got, we learned that if we made the fire hotter, we could get more light out. Then Edison found ways to, to heat metal wires without burning them out by enclosing them inside vacuum tubes, and that was the incandescent lamp. Over the next 10 years, we found ways to make those wires hotter and hotter, increasing the efficiency, reaching temperatures of about 3,000 degrees C, twice as hot as fire. But in order to go hotter than that, we needed to vaporize the wires, forming a luminous gas, and sealing that inside the vacuum tubes. That was discharge lighting. That doubled the temperature to about 6,000 degrees, or about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Discharge lamps operate as hot and as bright as the surface of the sun but we're running out of ways to make them more efficient. And that's where solid state comes in, making light without necessarily making heat. So let me show you how LED does that. If we look at an LED light bulb, open it up and see the LEDs inside, and take one out, zoom in on it. In the center is the light emitting area, typically maybe a millimeter in size. And if we look at that light emitter from the side view, it looks like a layer cake. Two of the top layers are electrically charged with electrons and molecules that are missing electrons called holes. The applied voltage forces the electrons to fall into the holes, releasing the energy of the electrons as light. If we change the material of the LED, we can change the color of the light. We can make all colors of the rainbow. We can mix the colors to make white, but since today's LEDs, blue is the most efficient color that we have, typically today we make white light from blue LEDs and converting the blue to white with a phosphor. So back to that S-curve. Look at the evolution of the S-curve for LED. A sudden and momentous change. We really are at the cusp of a new lighting revolution. By the time this efficiency curve flattens out, it's going to be approaching the theoretical maximum efficiency of about 350 lumens per watt. That's the point at which we'd have all light and no heat. Already about 10 to 20 percent of new lighting systems sold are LED, and we expect that by the end of this decade, that'll be 60 percent or more. So what does this mean? Well, if you go back to Edison's first bulb, more than 99 percent of the electricity was wasted as heat. Less than 1 percent came out as light. And now we've been toiling away for 133 years, and our best discharge lamps, most efficient, still waste two-thirds of the electricity as heat. Our expectations are that we're going to reduce that maybe as low as 20% with LED. Let me show you what a big deal that is. If we look at the total energy used by humans globally on all applications, including electricity and fuels for heating, transportation, manufacturing, agriculture, everything in 2010, lighting consumed 8% of that total. With the oncoming efficiency increases in LED and beginning to use smart controls so that the lights are on only when and where we need them, that 8% is going to be falling toward 2% in the next few decades. We will have nearly eliminated the global energy needs for providing our light. Another perspective on this is that the amount of energy saved globally from the adoption of LED lighting is going to roughly equal all of the energy delivered from all renewable sources. That's, that's all of the solar, wind, hydro, and others. That's a big deal. It's such a big deal that McKinsey and Company, in 
2011 in their report titled Lighting the Way stated that switching to LED lighting is economically more attractive than any other means of CO2 abatement. That means switching to LED is more attractive than solar, wind, hybrid vehicles, reforestation, carbon sequestration. We should be moving as rapidly as possible to adopt LED everywhere that it makes sense. So this would be a lighting revolution even if only for the eco impact, but LED is changing almost every other aspect of lighting too. And the reason is because they're kind of like computer chips. They're manufactured the same way from similar materials, and you've seen what low cost, high power, tiny integrated circuits have done for computers and mobile devices. Those same breakthrough solid state electronics capabilities are now emerging in solid state lighting. So let me show you the top 10 breakthrough capabilities that are being enabled by the solid state lighting revolution. Number 10, long life. LEDs typically last decades, not months or years. So you can use them where they might be hard to change out. Number nine, miniaturization. LEDs are the tiniest light sources, so they can disappear into fixtures or furniture or fabrics. Number eight, because they're so tiny, we can aim the light of LEDs precisely where and only where we need it. You can see in a parking lot here, there's no light pollution spilling out into the neighborhood or escaping into outer space and yet the parking lot's very evenly lit. Only LED can do that. Number seven, efficiency. LED is surpassing fluorescent efficiency, and then LED efficiency will go on to double beyond that. Number six, color. If you want to improve color over compact fluorescent lamps, if you want to simulate the colors of nature indoors, if you want all the colors of the rainbow, if you want to create uniquely highlighted spaces of, with color and light, most of these things we can do now, and the others are coming soon. Number five, low cost. I know we hear it every day. Nobody wants to spend $20 or $40 on an LED light bulb, even though I assure you, you'll save a whole lot more than that in electricity, and it is a great investment. Nonetheless, we hear it, and we're working very hard on reducing LED costs. Look at this curve, not an S curve. This is a straight line right into the bargain basement. In 1972, it would have cost $60,000 to build one LED light bulb. But LED costs have been coming down about 10x every 10 years for several decades now. The US Department of Energy forecasts that in just another three to five years, the cost of an LED bulb will be comparable to a CFL bulb. And number four, controllable, remotely. You'll be able to turn your lights on and off, dim them, change the colors, have a light show if you want to. But, number three, you won't have to control your lighting. It's going to be smart enough to control itself. As depicted in these four images, all shot in the same kitchen, the lighting system's going to know who's in the room and what they're doing. What color of light do they prefer and how much do they need and where, where do they want it? It'll turn off when you leave the room and turn back on when you come back in the room. And number two, your light bulbs and fixtures are going to be talking amongst themselves and be connected to the internet. Imagine every LED light bulb or fixture being a Li-Fi connection. Illumination will have become communication. And the number one breakthrough capability is, well, it's a challenge to you. So if you had a nearly ideal light source, what would you do with it? It would have long life, be vanishingly small, high precision, high efficiency, great color, controllable, Smart, connected. Lighting is becoming almost everything we ever wanted it to be, and even things we never imagined. Hey, start paying attention to lighting. It's becoming really cool, literally. <laughs> Thank you.